kind of active on the internet. And but anyway, my name is Christopher Hike. Good to meet you, Eugene Scott. Um, so yeah, tell us about yourself a little bit and who you are and what you do. Well, I am the executive director of the National Center for Science Education. That is a grandly named, if small, nonprofit in Oakland, California. And what we do is we monitor the creationism and evolution controversy, and we uh, advise people in states and uh, communities around the country who are trying to keep evolution in the public schools. We um, give them the tools they need to uh, do the hard work of trying to persuade school boards and state legislatures not to do stupid things like introduce creationism or keep evolution out or whatever. <laughs> yes, um, so just a little background on me. I'm a, I'm a graduate student at CSU and I'm in the biochemistry program and I have followed the ID uh, create, or evolution debate since early in high school and just I, I can't believe that we're at the year 2010 and we're still having to deal with it. So my first question... It, it sucks you in. Yeah, it? <laughs> it really does suck you it's, in. And it's it, terrible though, the it, way it just... you, you you, you just, it's fascinating. It is fascinating, it, yeah, it's kind of, um, yeah, especially when you get into characters like Kent Hovind and these people that you're just, just, what? How are these people in existence? I mean, they said what? Yeah, they how said, can they believe that? How can they, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that was the first question I wanted to lead with was, there's this graph from the New York Times that shows percentage of people that, quote, believe in evolution, and it, sh and it Actually, shows... Is that Actually, that's not from the New York Times. It's not. Okay. It was it was reprinted from uh, John D. Miller. Okay. Uh, that was actually Miller Scott in Okamoto. It was published from uh, an article from Science Magazine. Ah. Okay. And uh, the Scott is Eugenie Scott. Oh, well, there you go. Well, see, <laughs> actually, I didn't even know the full connection. disclosure here. Full this disclosure. I'm John all Miller. about which I am all about open access and full disclosure. So <laughs> the full disclosure is John Miller did all the work on that. Uh, ah, he was okay. kind John enough Miller. to make me s uh, second author on that article, but wow. uh, really I just helped him with the interpretation and helped right. him with the writing of the article. Well, perfect. He did the heavy work. He did the heavy lifting. He's a wonderful data manipulation. Wonderful. Uh, he collected the data, and those are his questions. He's he's been working in this field of public understanding of science for decades, and he was very gracious to include me as the author, the second author on this one. But yeah, they're pretty startling. Um, for, for those of you watching this from from afar, this is a Science Magazine uh, told us that this was the most requested graphic uh, in decades. I mean, wow. this may be of all times. Every, everybody wants this a graphic. I can actually provide you with a, uh, a still of this if you want to put Great. it in. But yeah, we beat Turkey. Yeah, we beat Turkey. <laughs> Great. Yes, it, it, sadly. But that's the question that I have is, in American history, what, I mean, I know <laughs> why that you're us? an why, us, Lord? Why, why is it us? What factors in American history contributed to our placement low, low, low on this list of well, you said the magic word. You said history. And like everything else, uh, the, the key to understanding the present is the past. I mean, uh, history and culture tells us why we are where we are now. And specifically for uh, the creationism and evolution controversy, it is the um, history of religion in the United States, and I would also say uh, the history of education. We have a very decentralized education system where decisions are made about what to teach and who teaches and how, to, how much do we pay them and so forth, very much at the local level. We have no national curriculum, which is astonishing to people in Europe and Great Britain and Japan and other developed nations. They, you, you what? They, they, this is just absurd to them. Uh, but we make all of our decisions at the local level, and those decisions are made by elected school board members, which means education in the United States is very politicized. So a politicized education system is number one. Number two, uh, the religious history of the United States has been very different from that in Europe and Great Britain. And let, let's, let's stick with that because um, the history of religion in the United States is primarily um, Christian religion because that was the settlement of the United States. And it is, of course, Christianity where you find the major objection to evolution in the U.S., so we'll just stick with Christian religion. 
Christianity in the United States has taken a much more conservative turn than in Europe and Great Britain. In the United States, in the early part of the 20th century, in the second decade, about 1915, 1918, a particular form of Protestantism called fundamentalism was invented. The idea of biblical literalism is fairly new in American Christianity. Um, we, you know, in America, we have this idea that biblical literalism is traditional Christianity. It isn't. Biblical literalism went out of fashion in European Christianity uh, in the 18 and 1900s. It, it, in fact, if you read Augustine, it went out of fashion a lot longer ago. And uh, what, well, Augustine, yeah. that, what year about was that? 1300s. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Not 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 traditional. Just wait uh, a second. Sorry. Close this door. Oh, yes, I'll edit this this thing, but I was trying to do a little editing. Get his while well, we're still going here. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry about that. We forgot. I'm an amateur for hey, sure. That's but right. I'm this trying to I'm trying to work into the whole science writing thing, so, sure. so yeah. Anyway. Good plan. Well we'll take that up again. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's it. So we were talking about the so, religion let, 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 let falling. Me take, let me take it up from um, from biblical literalism. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Americans think that biblical literalism is traditional. Christianity, but it really isn't. It's a fairly recent development in Christianity. But it's been colored by the history of Christianity in the United States because of the development of fundamentalism, which is fairly recent in American Christianity. It dates from the second decade of the 20th century. Now, fundamentalism dates from the development or the writing of these 12 pamphlets in the second decade of the 20th century, the 12 fundamentals, which laid down this back-to-basics uh, Protestantism called fundamentalism. And in the 12 fundamentals, they called for biblical inerrancy, which eventually hardened into more of a biblical literalism. And as part of that biblical inerrancy, uh, the point was made that the book of Genesis should be taken more or less as written, although interestingly enough, evolution wasn't wasn't taken in the Twelve Fundamentals as unacceptable. It's just God had to be in charge, but later on that hardened into evolution was unacceptable. You know, in, there was more acceptance of evolution in the Twelve Fundamentals than later on uh, fundamentalist uh, uh, practitioners were able to accept. But at any rate, evolution became less acceptable to American conservative Christians than it was to, say, continental Christians, uh, either Catholics or, or Protestants. So we've had this tradition of more conservative Christianity in the United States. That, coupled with the um, uh, decentralized education system, a more politicized education system, meant that it was easier to keep evolution out of the schools, which is exactly what happened. Um, th just back to those 12, um, the pamphlets, mm -hmm. um, you said that was in the 1920s? Mm -hmm. Did, now, was that like William Jennings Bryant and... It was and, indeed. It was, okay. Mm -hmm. And the whole lead up to the Scopes trial and all that. Yeah, right. yeah. And how much of that, I mean, what were the fear factors in history that may have caused that? Because I know there was a big backlash in the 50s because of the fear of communism and things like that and the, the you know, the words in God we trust being put back on our money in 1952. Like, where, where did that come from that, you know, where was the impetus for that? Well, historians uh, look at the period of the 19-teens and the early 20s, the period right after World War I, as one of a tremendous amount of social disruption and anxiety and angst and uh, a lot of, of concern about, you know, modernism has failed. I mean, the Germans were considered this paragon of civilization, and my God, look what they've done. Right. I mean, uh, science and modernism has failed if they produce something like the Germans, who, who had created this horrible mess over there. Right. And so uh, there was a lot of, of concern that, well, maybe we should go back to basics. And there was a, a religious re revival at the time, and fundamentalism was part of it. So um, William Jennings Bryan, uh, was a very interesting man, and I think uh, 